Every Friday, we check in with our Ontario hubs to find out what people across the province are talking about. Tonight, a change of pace. We're pleased to welcome Nipissing University political science professor David Tabachnik. He is a regular Ontario hubs contributor who has been working on a series of articles that delve into the question of why Northern Ontarians feel alienated from the rest of the province. And he joins us now via Skype from the gateway to the north, North Bay, Ontario. David, good to see you again. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Can you describe that alienation that Northerners, many of them anyway, tend to feel from the rest of the province? Well, I think that it's really based in a cultural divide between the South and the North. Um, Northern Ontario makes up about 87% of the land mass of the province, but only has about 5% of the population. Uh, this results in a very different experience of what it means to be an Ontarian, uh, much different than, let's say, exists in big cities such as Toronto and Ottawa. Um, and this manifests in a sense that Queen's Park, for one, the way it legislates, um, the way it manages the economy, doesn't take the concerns of Northern Ontario seriously. Uh, they're, they don't quite understand what the culture of the region is all about. And I can give you a couple of examples. Just yeah, sure, to, fire uh, away. Just to illustrate this point. Uh, uh, for example, right now there's debate about the At Species, uh, Species at Risk Act, uh, uh, part of the uh, environmental regulations. Now, from a Southern Ontario perspective, we would say this is a good thing. This is protecting endangered species. Uh, but from many uh, northerners perspective these laws represent overregulation that stop industries such as forestry and mining and kill jobs and so something that is looked upon as a good thing in the south is looked upon as a bad thing in the north and since most of the votes are down here I guess governments tend to listen to the noise down here more than the noise up there is that right that's certainly the case. Again, as I said, we have 5% of the population, 11 provincial ridings. And while that at times does get the attention of politicians in Queen's Park, most often it is issues related to Southern Ontario that dominate. I, that, that's understandable in a purely mathematical sense, in a political sense. But uh, nonetheless, here we are occupying this huge portion of the province and getting very little attention. I guess, I mean, I've clearly heard this refrain over the years many, many times, and I guess I want to get a better sense from you as to, okay, that's the official line, that's the sort of conventional wisdom and official story, but you live there and you've looked into it and you've done the actual empirical research on a lot of this, so is it true? Do Northerners have a legitimate, justifiable beef against the center? Well, I would say yes and no. I, I, that, that's an excellent question. Uh, yes, because I do think that there is a misunderstanding about the economy and culture of the North in the South. A lot of people, uh, politicians included, that live in the South have never been here. So that's, an under, that's understandable that they wouldn't get it. Uh, on the other hand, it's not as though the province completely ignores the region. There are many different programs, uh, both economic and political, that attempt to mitigate or overcome uh, some of the issues of being again in such a large area with such a small population. Let's talk about something that sort of exploded a little bit at the legislature over the last week or so and um, I don't know who's right and I don't know who's wrong on this I'm just gonna lay the facts out there and we can let everybody else make up their own minds. Uh, there was a debate in the legislature and there was some heckling back and forth and a liberal MPP from down here in the south Northumberland Quinty West Lou Rinaldi he just said uh, he was caught saying the expression no man's land and the Tories instantly accused him of referring to Northern Ontario as no man's land which is what the subject of the discussion was about at the time he said he was referring to the PC leader Patrick Brown's position on the issue as being nothing and therefore he was in no man's land on the issue and when you refer to it in an article that you wrote for our website you basically said that an incident like this exacerbates northerners already thin-skinned feelings on many things. Uh, what are you trying to say there? Well, I think that why it hit home, if you will, this comment about no, no man's land, why um, Northern MPPs jumped all over it, is that 
there's some truth to it. Um, the population of the North is actually in decline, so it's already a rather sparse, sparsely populated region, but the latest Statistics Canada report shows that, in fact, the population is declining, while the rest of the province, mostly in southern Ontario, is growing. So when we say no man's land, uh, that's becoming more and more a reality as the region empties out. Uh, I know a number of months ago I interviewed a, a bus driver, I think, from your town who wants to lead a separatist party uh, in northern Ontario. Is that movement gaining any traction that you can discern? Yes, this is the uh, northern Ontario party. It's uh, sort of a rebranding of the older uh, northern Ontario Heritage Party. And their platform is essentially to create a separate province of northern Ontario. Uh, and this is led by, I think his name is Trevor Holliday. And uh, yes, I would say that it certainly got a lot of attention. And at least when you chat with people, you hear that they do have support. I, I really feel as though that support is more of a protest vote than a, a serious effort to create a separate province of Northern Ontario. But it is a reflection of this general sense of alienation and resentment that we've been talking about. So I've got to ask the follow-up question, which is, do you think the majority of people in Northern Ontario think that that region of the current province of Ontario would do better in every way you can imagine that if it were its own province? I don't think so. I don't think that it would have majority support, and I would be very surprised to see the Northern Ontario Party elect a member to uh, the legislature. It's only running, of course, in the Northern Ontario ridings, the 11 Northern Ontario ridings, but we'll have to wait and see. That would be quite an interesting development. Uh, I think most Northerners, again, like the idea of a separate province, but in actual practice, I think it would be quite difficult let's leave alone the idea that we would need a constitutional amendment to make it happen. Um, one of the major issues is that the very things that many Northerners are angry about at Queen's Park, for example, there's something called the, the Far North Act, which again is a regulation that stops development in the Far North. That's a reflection of the need to consult with First Nations communities when it comes to things, let's say, like mining development. Uh, a separate province of Northern Ontario would be obliged, again, to engage in the exact same consultations. So it's not as though a separate province of Northern Ontario would suddenly be freed of these same obligations that are coming out of Queen's Park. Uh, the same things that stymie economic development and natural resource development in our region would remain in a separate province. Well, again, not meaning to stereotype here, but let's do a, a, a specific example. You know, the company that wants to make the Energy East pipeline thing happen uh, has now announced it's not going to go forward. I'm sure that south of the French River, there are plenty of environmentalists uh, who are thrilled at this development. Um, how about in North Bay? Was it a big issue up there? Well, this is a bit of a unique situation for North Bay because the Energy East route, as it was proposed, was going to go right beside, if not through, our watershed, the Trip Lake watershed, where North Bay gets its drinking water from. Uh, the concern was that if there was going to be a spill out of that pipeline, due to the nature of our weather and the geography of the lake, it could have devastating consequences on our drinking water source and really imperil the future of the city. So uh, there was universal uh, protest against the Energy East pipeline in North Bay. Uh, the problem was, from our perspective, is that Queen's Park did not seem particularly interested in calling for a rerouting of that pipeline. Uh, they were interested again in things like protecting northern species and northern forests, but when it came to the people of North Bay, there was silence. Hmm. Let me do another uh, sort of paradoxical issue here, and I know Northerners sometimes get upset with me when I raise this, but I'm just advancing the facts here. These are just the facts, and people can make up their own minds. Northern Ontario, if a bill currently before the legislature passes, will get two more ridings, actually. And they will be two more very sparsely populated ridings. There are ridings down here in the south that have got 100, 120, 130,000 people in them, and the two new northern ridings are going to have about 30,000 people in them. So, in effect, the north will be, if you look strictly at the numbers, overrepresented in the legislature of the province of Ontario. Do people understand that in northern Ontario? 
I, I'm, I'm going to challenge your characterization to some degree. Okay. Uh, uh, again, when we're doing districting, when we're doing redistricting and creating new ridings, it's not just about representation by population. There also has to be regional considerations taken into account. And so that's what's going on here with these two new ridings. Uh, one of the ridings, for example, is attempting to ensure more First Nations representation. Uh, the riding will have about two-thirds population of, of First Nations people. Um, is this um, just about representation by pop population? No, it's also this consideration about having the people of a region represented in Queen's Park, an underrepresented group, perhaps. Uh, likewise, when you look at some of the ridings up here in northern Ontario, they are massive. Uh, Kenora Rainy River, for example, is about the size of Germany. And if you just look at it in a sort of logical way, why should a few square blocks of downtown Toronto have the same influence as this massive area, even though it's sparsely populated? So I think the attempt is to recognize these regional concerns. Now, I will also point out in this next election, despite having two additional Northern Ontario ridings, we are going to add 15 ridings to the south. So even though we may think we're getting more influence, of course, in relative terms, our influence will decline all the more. And just for the record, I didn't mean to convey that I either approve or disapprove one way or another of it. And you're quite right to point out there are other considerations besides strict rep by pop. I was merely advancing the math. So I just want to put that out there for the record. Um, let me also put this in place. I, I mean, we've known for decades and decades there's kind of a love-hate um, in northern Ontario for Queen's Park. Uh, but I wonder as well whether there is an acknowledgement in northern Ontario that so much of the economy really depends on the permanent provincial government jobs uh, that are there, be it, you know, the Ontario Lottery Corporation in Sault Ste. Marie or whatever. Tell us that. Well, I agree with you there completely. Uh, yes, we are very reliant on uh, what I'll call uh, government largesse. Um, here in North Bay, for example, we've be benefited tremendously from a film and television tax credit that has brought a lot of uh, television productions, film productions to our city. It trains and employs hundreds of our citizens, uh, brings millions of dollars into our city. Uh, Sudbury similarly has seen a huge rise in uh, film productions in its city. And again, this brings in dollars and jobs. Uh, that's all based upon policies that are coming out of Queen's Park. Um, similarly, here in North Bay, we have the uh, Ontario Northland Transportation Commission, and that is a provincial agency, essentially a crown corporation. And it doesn't necessarily uh, bring a lot of revenue in. Uh, it does cost taxpayer dollars, but it is critically important to the economy and the employment levels of our city. A few years ago, um, under the McGuinty government, there was serious consideration of privatizing Ontario Northland, and this caused a huge outcry in our city. Fortunately, the Wynn government changed course on that, and it continues to be a cram corporation. Um, I think the idea here, the paradox of Northern Ontario, is that we want the province to do more for us. We want better programs, more jobs, more money coming our way. But ultimately, what we want is to do it on our own. We want independence. We want a sustainable economy. And uh, the, 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 that's the challenge. How, how does that happen? Uh, so at once, we want more government support, and on the other hand, we want less. That is a paradox which we will continue to explore with you, both online with your articles, and we thank you for coming on the agenda tonight. David Tabachnik from Nipissing University. Always good to talk to you, David. Thanks so much. Thank you, Steve. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.